In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some steps, tips, and general fundamentals to paint a tree. Also stick around for the end for a bonus step where I go over how to make color variations of the tree. So with that said, let's get into it. The first thing I'm doing here is laying in a basic shape for the tree and really just sketching out the branches. I'm using a flat color here. It's a pretty neutral, desaturated orange brown and I'm just trying to figure out the composition and how all of this is gonna be situated. I'm using the first few minutes to get a rough sketch of the layout because having a solid composition is crucial for everything that will come after. I don't wanna worry about detail, lighting, texture, or any form yet. The most important thing right now is to get this flat shape looking good. The initial color that I've chosen doesn't matter too much because I'm gonna get more color variety on top of it later. So it's just a placeholder. As I'm building up this shape, I want the bottom of this tree to be thicker and it's gonna to start to get thinner as it goes towards the top, as most trees do. I have this twist or bend shape on the tree and I think it adds a nice dynamic feel. So rather than just one stiff tall tree, which may feel boring, it has more movement or life to it. In general, trees can grow in a lot of different ways. So I find it a fun thing to study or paint, being able to see how trees can wrap around things, twist and just create a lot of unique and interesting shapes. And so sticking to this main branch of the tree, as it turns up to the left there, I'm having these smaller secondary branches coming off of the sides. And then I'm working on these tertiary or third level tree branches shooting out from those. So I'm going for that three level system whenever dealing with trees. So you have the one main tree branch in the middle, and then you have some secondary tree branches shooting off of the sides of those. And then from the secondary branches, you have these tertiary branches, which are gonna be the smallest and thinnest. And you can always get more detailed after that if you wanna add even more and have maybe even a fourth level of tree branches, but just try not to overdo it though. But I'm mainly sticking to that three level idea, at least in the beginning. And of course, I may add more branches later on if needed. I'm adding a new layer below the branch layer and I'm gonna to start to paint some tree leaves. Again, just using a round brush and having this layer below the branch layer keeps these leaves behind the branches that I've already painted. So I'll start by getting in these general shapes with this dark, neutral, yellow, green color and just figuring out the silhouette very similar to how I handle the tree branches. And so I'll have some areas of negative space where the tree leaves aren't as clustered together and we can see through them. I don't wanna to do too much of that though because it will also become too busy in detail if I'm not careful, but having a few pockets where we can see through the leaves can be a good thing. Another thing to keep in mind when painting is detail density and distribution. So for example, we have this one big leaf cluster shape at the top left there, and then I'll add some medium shapes around it and have some smaller shapes detailed below those. So without getting too much into all the art theory behind that, just know that I'm paying close attention to shape distribution and keeping them grouped well so they don't become too noisy or repetitive. It's all about having a good balance. In general, I really need to regulate how many details I add to this tree, especially in the beginning. Later on, when everything comes together, sure, we can go in and add some more details, but for now, I don't wanna to get too carried away. I'm also staying pretty zoomed out when painting this because I'm trying to focus on the overall silhouette of the tree. It's really important to be aware of how your silhouettes or shapes look, because if your shape looks clean and reads well, then a lot of times you may find that the final piece will also read well. But if your shapes are hard to read or messy, it may not matter how well you render or detail something because the underlying structure might still need some work. So staying zoomed out can help keep you focused on what's important. Now with the overall silhouette looking okay to me, I'm going back to the tree branches here just to take my mind off of the leaves. I know they're gonna need some more minor work later on, but I decided to start getting some form color and a little bit of detail onto the actual tree is branches in the trunk itself. So I'll sample the base color that I used for the tree and I'll just start painting in with some lighter and more saturated oranges just to get some basic rough form on the main tree branch. And so all these details are on a clipping mask layer which is really useful for keeping things confined to a certain shape. So in this case if I make a new layer above the original branch layer and set it to clipping mask Everything that I paint on the clipping mask layer will only be visible within the shape of the layer below it. 
And that's one of the reasons I try to pay so much attention to how the silhouette looks early on, because if it looks good, then we can simply add a clipping mask to it. And now all these details that I'm painting aren't breaking that shape. I'm able to paint these details in without having to worry about being messy along the edges or drawing outside of the shape. And it just keeps things clean and much more simple. So we don't have to go back in and clean up the edges later on. I'm also adjusting the size of the brush every now and then. So I want a thicker brush size for the bigger parts of the tree so I can fill in more space quicker. And for the finer details, such as the small branches, you'll see me bring down the brush size to be quite a bit smaller. This brush does have pressure size, so I can somewhat control the size of the brush by how hard I press with the pencil. And as for the opacity, I'm pretty much keeping it at 100% throughout this whole painting. Although the brush also does have pressure opacity, so the lighter I press, the lighter the strokes will be. My goal with the form and the lighting for this tree is to have the lighting coming in from behind on the right side. So the left side where the bend or the curve of the main tree trunk is, I want to have more of a shadow and in general I want the whole left side of the tree to be darker. Establishing the lighting scenario in any scene is going to be really important when it comes to building up the form, detail, and three-dimensionality of an object in the piece. And so if you can establish where the lighting is and stay true to that, you can figure out how the forms turn, where the ambient occlusion is, where the bounce light is hitting, and overall just how the shapes and forms work in a three-dimensional space. So I really recommend just getting comfortable with lighting and to look at references as well. And doing studies from reference will help you get familiar with how lighting works on three-dimensional objects, because personally I've had hard times making things feel three-dimensional myself, but with some practice and patience, it does get easier. And so another tip, whether it be you're painting a tree or really just any painting in general, is to group things. So for example, the bottom edge of the tree trunk has that dark brown color, which is the same value for the most part all along the entire bottom side of the tree. Instead of having multiple different values there, I decided to group it all into that one dark value, which helps simplify things and keep it clean. And values aren't the only thing that can be grouped either. You can also group shape sizes, areas of detail versus areas of rest, and even colors. And speaking of colors, I don't want the color palette to be all over the place. So by grouping and limiting my color palette, I can make things less overwhelming. You may notice that I'm only sticking to a few main orange colors for the tree branches without having too much contrast between the color shifts. When painting this detail, I'm only using the round brush to do this. In my opinion, the brush choice doesn't matter as much as it may seem. So as long as you're using something that you generally feel comfortable with, then you should be good. What's more important are the fundamentals, such as some of the things I've been talking about so far. These are the things that I'm more concerned about when painting. Here I make the background canvas color darker because I want to get in some rim lighting on parts of the tree and I want that to pop out more or have more contrast. And with the lighter background, I just wasn't able to see the new lighting that I was adding in. So I start painting along the right and top sides of some of the branches with a much more warm color to indicate the light hitting the edges. And as mentioned earlier, the lighting is coming from the back right side of the tree. So I'm keeping that in mind when painting the lighting. With the leaf shape on a separate layer, I can make a new layer above it as a clipping mask and softly paint in a lighter green along the top right side, which will indicate some lighting hitting those leaves. And I'm just using a soft airbrush to do this as it gives a nice soft transition without it being too harsh.
right, so at this point, I'm building up the texture, form, lighting, and overall believability of this tree. A lot of it is just detail work. I'll be using mainly the round brush, but I do use some of the airbrush in here just to have some soft transitions between light and shadow. And just playing with these textures and refining some of the edges, adding some small details here and there, and working with the color. You'll see me flip the canvas horizontally often, and I do this just to see how things are looking. Oftentimes when we look at a particular piece for a while, we can become numb or desensitized to how the actual piece looks. So flipping the canvas horizontally can be like holding it up to a mirror, and we can just get a new perspective or a fresh look on what's going on. And a lot of times it's a good way to really quickly point out some things that maybe could be changed or maybe don't look completely how we want them to. So when we see it in this new perspective, we can spot these things and then we can go in and change them. So at this point, I'm really just bouncing around to different elements of the tree and continuing to build up the form and the lighting and just make everything feel more polished. And this part can be a bit tedious and take some time, but to achieve a final finished and polished look, it's necessary. So even though I'm working with details, I'm trying not to get too caught up on little particular things that may not matter too much. So I'm making sure to still zoom out from time to time and take in a bigger picture of how everything's coming together. So really at this part, I'd say it's important to have a balance between rendering, but not rendering too much to the point to where things start to become overly detailed. And you can definitely reach a point where you can over render a painting and so I'm really just trying to keep that in mind. Don't want to do too much, but I want to do enough to where it still feels polished and it looks good. So what I'm doing here is making a new layer above the tree leaf layer and I'm setting it to overlay mode. And overlay mode is a blend mode where the paint that I put down will affect the paint below it. And in this case, I'm using an orange color on the overlay layer. And so if I paint on top of the green tree leaves, they'll start to feel warmer and look more vibrant. So this is a good way to get some lighting and glow effect, but I don't do this until the later stages of the painting when I know that everything else is pretty much good to go. Here you'll see me adding a lighter rectangle behind the tree itself. And this is just a trick to have more contrast between the darker tree leaves and the lighter background.
down at the base of the tree, I'm starting to get in some grass textures by using a grass brush that has a particular shape that I made. And I'm just using a few greens, getting in some lighter parts along the edges. Alright, so as promised earlier, I'm now going to share how you can get some color variations of your tree or really just anything that you're painting. So we have this tree here and it's just about complete, but I want to get some more color variations. So what I can do is go to the tree leaf layer. So layer three right here, and I can collapse all the detail clipping mask layers above it. So like, for example, layer 19 is this layer of detail along the edges. So I can take that and collapse that down. And I want to leave the two overlay layers above it separate. I don't want those to be affected by the color shifts that we're going to do. So from here, we can go back to layer three and go up here to the adjustments tab, tap on hue, saturation and brightness, and we can shift the hue slider to whatever color we want. So for this example, I'll just go to a purple color, something like this, and I'll increase the saturation quite a bit here just to get some more color into the leaves. And I'm not going to change the brightness since the values are already good as they are. And so to confirm this, we can just tap on the adjustments tab. And now we have some variation for the tree leaf colors. So now we can also do this for the grass layer if we want. So I'll just tap on the grass layer, do the same steps, go to the color sliders here. I can maybe shift it into the purples, really whatever color you want, but it doesn't matter too much. And we can confirm that. Then I'll do it for these grass layers too just have these little details on a separate layer. So just need to make sure that they all are the same color that I want. And finally, I can do this for the flowers as well. Say we want some blue flowers in there, then we can easily just change the color. So you could also collapse all the layers down and just shift the whole image together. But personally, I find that I have less control over the individual elements when doing that. So I like to just keep the layers separate and individually shift the colors of each layer. So for example, if I don't want this tree branch to be purple, then I can change it to whatever color I want. Or for example, if I want the tree branch to be more of like a blue or a green, I have individual control on just that element. So that's why I do it this way. And here are just a few variations that I made using this technique. So hopefully this video helped and you were able to learn something from it. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay creative.